A lot happened in the world of JavaScript in 2024, and to recap the year, we're counting down the 15 most starred JavaScript libraries, frameworks, and runtimes. For each one, we'll talk about new features, new releases, announcements, internet drama, and much more. So if that sounds good to you, let's dive in. My name is CJ, welcome to Syntax. First up is Node.js, which is a cross-platform JavaScript runtime you can use to create web servers, web apps, CLI tools, and scripts. With 9.2 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 15 in the list. March was a really big month for Node.js because they launched the redesign of their website. Built with Next.js, this launch was the culmination of years of collaboration and work by the Node.js team and others. Node also stabilized several features this year, including watch mode and the ability to run NPM scripts directly. And they also removed command line flags for more experimental features like requiring ESM modules and the long awaited ability to be able to run TypeScript directly with Node via type stripping. For more on Node.js, check out episode 716 of Syntax, where Scott and Wes chat with Node.js core contributor Yagis, and also check out episode 811, where they recap some of the modern features that were added to Node this year. Next up is Biome, which is an all-in-one toolchain for linting and formatting code. With 9.3 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 14 in the list. Biome kicked off the year by launching a brand new logo and website. This year, they added support for frameworks like Astro, Svelte, and Vue. They also focused on migration from other tools by releasing the migrate command, which can automatically convert your ESLint and Prettier configs into a biome.json file. On their one-year anniversary in September, they released stable support for CSS and GraphQL. Throughout the year, Biome was adopted by tons of high-profile open source projects like Ant Design, Astro, Sentry, Discord, and many others, so there's a clear desire from JavaScript developers for simpler configs and simplified toolchains. For more on Biome, check out episode 745 of Syntax, where Scott and Wes talk about modern JS toolchains, and also check out episode 764, where they chat with the creator of Biome, Emmanuel Stapa. Next up is Drizzle ORM, which is a TypeScript ORM with both relational and SQL-like query APIs. With 9.9 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 13 in the list. The Drizzle team has been working hard on their path to V1 and released nine big features across 2024. Also, they updated their documentation to make onboarding much smoother for new users and made existing things much easier to find for existing users. They added several new dialects and drivers, including Cloudflare SQLite durable objects and PG Lite. And best of all, they simplified usage and improved DX in multiple ways, including simpler database initialization, simpler schema definitions, and automatic casing. Drizzle is getting closer and closer to V1, and they hope to launch early in 2025. For more on Drizzle, check out episode 721, where Scott and Wes chat about how they've been using Drizzle in their apps, and also check out episode 797, where Scott and Wes chat with the creators of Drizzle, Andrew and Alex. Next up is Tailwind CSS, a utility-first CSS framework packed with classes that can be composed to build any design directly in your markup. With 10.5 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 12 in the list. The biggest news for Tailwind started in March when they open sourced their progress on v4 and laid out their plans for what's to come in the next version of Tailwind, including a ground up rewrite of the engine, a unified toolchain with Lightning CSS, CSS first configuration, and of course, as much backwards compatibility as possible. The team worked hard throughout the year and released the first v4 beta in November, which includes a new engine that is five times faster than v3. Next up is Bun, an all-in-one toolkit, bundler, package manager, and runtime for JavaScript. With 10.6 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 11 in the list. Bun kicked off the year by adding the ability to import and embed SQLite databases directly in a JavaScript file. They also introduced Bun Shell, an embedded language and interpreter that allows you to write cross-platform shell scripts with JavaScript and TypeScript. In April, the long-awaited support for Windows was dropped in version 1.1. In September, they added the ability to compile and run native C directly from JavaScript. And in October, they released experimental support for CSS parsing and bundling. Next up is Dino, an open source JavaScript runtime for the modern web. With 10.74 thousand stars, they're coming in at number 10 in the list. This makes Dino the most star JavaScript runtime in 2024. Wow. Throughout the year, the Dino team put a lot of focus on performance improvements, better developer experience, 
and ultimately worked towards full Node.js and NPM compatibility. In March, the Dino team announced the public beta of JSR, a TypeScript-first, ESM-only package registry with the goal of simplifying package publishing and consumption across various JavaScript runtimes, not just Dino. In October, the team officially released version 2.0, which marked a major milestone with Node.js compatibility, enhanced package management, a stabilized standard library, and the introduction of LTS releases. The first long-term support, version 2.1, was released in November. And in December, Dino Deploy announced full support for Next.js. For more on Dino, check out episode 815 of Syntax, where Scott and Wes chat with the creator of Dino, Ryan Dahl, about the new features in V2. Next up is Astro, a JavaScript web framework optimized for building fast, content-driven websites. With 10.78 thousand stars, they're coming in at number nine in the list. In March, the team launched AstroDB, which is a SQL database integrated directly with the framework. It includes a TypeScript ORM with Drizzle and automatic migrations out of the box. At the same time, the team launched Astro Studio, which was a way to host your AstroDB. The team was also hard at work on their documentation theme called Starlight, which turned one year old in June. Throughout the year, Starlight has been adopted by dozens of projects. In August, they released Astro Actions, a streamlined approach to defining and calling type safe backend functions. In September, Astro Studio was discontinued. However, AstroDB was opened up to connect to any LibSQL database, including Terso, increasing its flexibility. In December, all of their work throughout the year culminated in the stable release of V5. This brought the Content Layer API, which is a new way to work with content from many different sources. It also brought us Server Islands, which allow you to serve static pages with personalized content injected later. And they brought us type safe environment variables. For more on Astro, check out episode 664 of Syntax, where Wes and Scott chat with the creator, Fred. Next up is Playwright, a framework for web testing and automation, which allows testing Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit with a single API. With 11.2 thousand stars, they're coming in at number eight in the list. Playwright continuously improved throughout the year, with new versions released approximately every two weeks. And in October, they announced Microsoft Playwright Testing a new service for running Playwright that leverages the cloud to allow much higher test parallelization across different OS browser combinations. For a look at a more unconventional use of Playwright, check out episode 822 of Syntax, where Wes talks about how we use Playwright to print century errors on receipts. Next up is Zustand, a small, fast, and scalable, bare-bones state management solution for React. With 11.3 thousand stars, they're coming in at number seven in the list. Zustand is simple and performant, and a lot of devs are realizing this. Some of the biggest names in the world of React are talking about how it's their first choice when looking for a global state management library for React. Now, throughout the year, Zustand had a steady stream of updates, including support for SSR and hydration. And towards the end of the year, they released version 5, with no new features, old things removed, and a smooth migration path from v4. For more on state management, check out episode 850 of Syntax, where Wes and Scott talk about all the possible ways to work with state and React, including Zustan. Next up is Hono, a web application framework that is fast, lightweight, built on web standards, and has support for any JavaScript runtime. With 11.6 thousand stars, they're coming in at number six in the list. If you haven't heard of Hono, you can think of it as a modern alternative to Express.js. It essentially allows you to define routes and handles. Early in the year, Hono released major version 4, which added support for static site generation, client components, and file-based routing provided by their meta framework that launched in the same release called Hono X. Hono continued to have a flurry of releases throughout the year, adding useful middlewares and helpers, and improving TypeScript support in their RPC client, which allows you to call Hono endpoints with full type safety. In October, the story of Hono was released on the Cloudflare blog, where the creator Yusuke Wada talks about where Hono came from and why he created it. For more on Hono, check out episode 837 of Syntax, where I chat with Wes and Scott and talk about why I think you should try Hono. Next up is Next.js, which is the React framework for the web. With 14.2 thousand stars, they're coming in at number five in the list. Next.js started the year off with a few minor releases of version 14, which include improved DX, caching, and image optimization. The biggest news for Next.js this year was the release of version 15, which included support for the React 19 RC, updated caching semantics, a new form component, and much more. 
finally, in December, they released version 15.1, which added support for React 19 Stable, which was released in the same month. For more on Next.js, check out episode 785 of Syntax, where Wes and Scott chat with Next.js co-author Tim Newkins. Next up is React, the library for web and native user interfaces. With 17,000 stars, they're coming in at number four in the list. Now, before this year, React had not seen a single update since June 2022. But finally, in April, we saw the release of version 18.3, which was essentially a maintenance release that added deprecation warnings in anticipation of the release of version 19. In May, they hosted ReactConf, which gave us a much more detailed look at what was to come in version 19, including new hooks like Use Transition, Use Optimistic, Use Form Status, Use Action State, and the most appropriately named new hook, Use. We also got a closer look at server components and server actions, and probably one of the most talked about and anticipated new features, the React Compiler. The compiler will make existing React apps faster by automatically memoizing state, components, and callbacks. In October, the React Compiler got a beta release, and finally, in December, version 19 was officially released. For more on React, check out episodes 718, 766, and 768, where Scott and Wes talk about all the new features in React. Next up is HTMX, which gives you high-power tools for HTML. With 17.2 thousand stars, they're coming in at number three in the list. In January, a blog post titled, Is HTMX Just Another JavaScript Framework? was posted on their website. The post sparked a lot of discussion on Reddit, Hacker News, and a lot of other online forums. In June, version 2.0 was released. This tightened up some defaults, but mostly kept the API the same. It also added improved support for web components. And they also released the biggest feature of the year, Dark Mode, on their website. For more on HTMX, check out episodes 726 and 734, where Scott and Wes talk about what it is, how to get started with it, and also chat with the creator, Carson Gross. Next up is Tari, which allows you to create small, fast, secure desktop and mobile applications. With 17.5 thousand stars, they're coming in at number two on the list. The Tari team was hard at work on version two of the library throughout the year. The release candidate first appeared in August, and in October, the stable version was released. This new version brought a new getting started experience. It also brought hot module replacement during development, and of course, the long-awaited mobile support, which now allows you to use Tari to build Android and iOS apps. For more on Tari, check out episode 821, where Wes and Scott chat with the creator of Tari, Daniel Thompson, and also check out episode 825, where Scott recaps how we built the production assistant app with Tari. Last up is ShadCN UI, which provides fully accessible React components built with Radix UI and Tailwind CSS that you can copy and paste into your apps. With 38.8 thousand stars, they're at number one in the list. In January, Shad CN UI turned one year old, which is pretty crazy to think about since they've had such a meteoric rise. In April, they introduced Lift Mode for blocks, which allows you to copy the smaller parts that make up a block template, like cards or forms. In July, they introduced Charts. Built on top of ReCharts, it's a collection of chart components that you can copy and paste into your apps. In September, they released their new CLI, which allows you to install anything from anywhere. You can add components, themes, hooks, functions, animations, and generated code directly into your apps. The CLI also allows you to install remote components via a URL. This has tight v0 integration because any generated code in the v0 dashboard can be directly installed into your project with a single command. In October, they released sidebar.tsx, which gives you 25 different components for building sidebars. And finally, in December, the CLI got mono repo support, which makes it much easier to use Shad CN UI in mono repos. So that's it for this year's list, but I am super excited to see which projects will rise to the top in 2025. Quick disclaimer, you might have noticed that the star numbers that I am showing are slightly different than the numbers that were reported by the Rising Stars report. That's because I wrote my own code to get that star data from the GitHub API. But I might have made a mistake. Um, all of the code I wrote and all of the data I gathered is linked in the description, so feel free to check it out or open an issue if you notice anything wrong. Also, all of the assets in the video were created by me, so if I messed anything up or missed anything, or maybe even I, I missed an announcement from one of the libraries mentioned here, let us know in the comments as well. 
Also, a recent comment on a YouTube video, Wes responded and said that if the Syntax channel reaches 500,000 subscribers, he will switch to NeoVim for a month. And Scott and I have decided that we will join him, so please subscribe. And the last thing is, a ton of effort went into making this video, so the best thing you could do for me is share it, like, comment, all those things. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.